In my previous video, I looked at a UV mapping approach that's caused a little bit of confusion, I think, and I wanted to do this video to clarify why a technique that I showed could be useful. In that previous video, I talked about a method that you could use to make sure that you have an absolute physical size that can be related to the UV space, which can be useful for certain applications like package design. And secondarily, I talked about how it could be used to synchronize what we call texel density between various objects. But that's really secondary. I had people saying, hey, Chris, you can do this much more efficiently without this long drawn approach you're doing. And I wanted to show you in a more specific way why this mechanism that I showed in the previous video can be very useful. To demonstrate this, I've created just basically this dummy packaging object that we're just going to use as our widget. And we want to UV map it. So let's jump into edit mode and we need to assign some seams really quickly. So I'll take this edge and we'll do a mark seam. And then around the bottom, it needs to be able to open up around the bottom. So we will do a mark seam on those edges. So right here, we could just select everything and then do a quick unwrap. And there we have a UV map. Super easy. But let's say that we've got a couple of other variations on this package that we're wanting to design and explore. So shift and D and we're going to create another one that we'll call to a uh, wide. So we'll come in really quick and we'll make a change. Let's switch over into vertex mode. Let's make sure we're in X-ray. And let's just sort of modify this really quickly so that we have sort of a shorter squatter version X minus one centimeter. And in the positive X, G, X, one, we'll just make this sort of a little bit shorter and squatter. And then finally, let's create one more version from the original. Let me move this one out of the way. And then this one, shift D. Y and we'll just move this one in front and I'm going to call this three small. So we have like a small version that we'll modify. Let's go into edit mode for that. Shift S, cursor to selected, period, A, S, and we'll just scale that one down as if we're wanting to test a slightly different sized version of the original. And this one we will take and we'll just maybe thin it G X 0.5 and then G X minus 0.5. Okay. So this is the variation that we have created in three packages. And now we just need to UV map them. So let's go ahead and leave edit mode, select each of the three, go into edit mode for each of the three, select them. And then we will just come over here and UV unwrap each of them. And it's going to use the UV canvas as efficiently as it possibly can. But in this context, this is not what we're interested in. We're interested in making sure that we have a physical size that we can establish for our UVs, even though the UV space is an abstract unitless ordinate system. I did talk about texel density and we could certainly come over here into the UV mapper and invoke the average island scale and it'll make some minor adjustments to make sure there's equivalent texel density between these three maps. But that is not a primary concern. Again, we want to maximize the use of the UV space, but on a per map basis and one that has been normalized to a specific size. So this is where my technique comes into play. So let's leave edit mode. Let's look at this in the front view, shift S, we're going to return cursor to the world origin and let's create a new plane and let's just go ahead and make it 45 centimeters, which is a size that I've already tested out that works pretty well. And this is going to be our reference size for the UV map, 45 centimeters. Remember that. Okay. Let's go ahead and apply scale. Now we can select each of our 3D objects. We'll go into edit mode, tab key, and then we just come over to UVs. And this is where we do that project from view bounds option. 
Okay, so there we go. Let's go ahead and just do the first one over here. Now, I'm going to turn off, we're in sync mode. I'm going to turn that off temporarily because having it off is the default mode. And I want to show you why it is that we're going to switch modes here. In the default mode where this little button is turned off, you only see UVs if the 3D polygons are selected. Well, we've got overlapping vertices and it's going to be hard to find pin points if that's the case. It's easier to select them in the 3D viewport, but when you do that, then you can't see the UVs because they're not selected. So this is where we change modes and we go into sync mode, which shows all the UVs regardless of what's selected here in the 3D viewport. Let's go into isolation mode. And now I can select easily the points that I want to pin here. So we just come over here. Let's go ahead and pin these points. And now select everything and we just use the unwrap. Conformal works really well in this situation. So now we have the UVs unwrapped and they're synchronized to a 45 centimeter by 45 centimeter area. Let's leave edit mode for this and we will do the same thing for the other two. And let's come in to edge mode. That'll make it easier. I can just select these reference edges and over here in vertex mode, then we would just go ahead and pin these and then unwrap them and all of the UVs are synchronized. So let's go ahead and pull all of these up at the same time and move them over. So all of these, they're overlapped because we're gonna be generating a separate bitmap for each of the labels. Now, you could go through the process of generating the labels all on the same bitmap, but in this particular case, that's not what I want to do. So let's go ahead and just select one of them here. And now you just come over and you do an export UV layout. And we just find the bitmap that we want to save it to. Let's do 4096 powers of two for our bitmap. Make sure you do all UVs and export. And then over here in your image editor of choice, let's go ahead and open up the texture that we just saved out. And there it is. Now, in this particular case, I'm in Affinity Photo and we it would be exactly the same operation in Photoshop. You just do resize document and you have sampling turned off. And we're going to come down here to centimeters and you just type in 45 centimeters by 45 centimeters, it resets the DPI. And now we have a canvas that we can design our label around that fits the proper physical size of the 3D object we have back in Blender. And that you could also design for printing purposes if that's what you were gonna do because it matches the correct physical size. And we do this for each of the three objects because they were all synchronized to this 45 by 45 centimeter UV space that we set up with that projection plane. So this is the benefit of this method is that we can generate a UV space that has that correct physical size relative to the 3D object and it will match the correct physical size of the 3D object once we take it over into an illustration package. Because that's what you would want to do. Your label for printing purposes needs to match the physical object size. And this technique allows you to do that.